Hey guys, it's Mahim. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, smash the subscribe button because I talk about property investment, personal development, and how to gain financial freedom. In today's video, I'm going to share with you five things to know when starting a business. Before we get to that, I'd like to thank everyone who's subscribed to our family. Joining the YouTube channel has been absolutely amazing. It has grown significantly and it's continuing to grow. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate you. I appreciate the shares i appreciate the like and the comment as well so it's going absolutely blooming my way so I'm super excited i've got a favor to ask the people that have been watching the channel that have not hit that subscribe button if you know you are one of those i kindly ask you to hit that subscribe button to join the family i made a promise to share a minimum of three to four content every single week so currently we have literally outstripping we're doing seven content every single day seven days a week so all that's happening because the channel is growing people are asking me to push more content out there and it's motivating me also it has encouraged me to sit here talking to this camera to serve you so thank you thank you thank you if you haven't done it smash that subscribe button now smash it smash it smash it fantastic thank you and while you're, while you're there also share the content with friends and family and perhaps you want to hit the like button as well thank you thank you thank you so you see what are the five things to know when you're starting a business in order for you to be financially free and maintain that wealth it's about creating passive recurring income it's about creating businesses that will make money whilst you're not doing anything or whilst you're sleeping so very important for you to start thinking about that because to, quite frankly i worked as an accountant and uh, that has not been the case for me working for someone will not take you to financial freedom the only thing that gets you to financial freedom is when you take your finances into your own hands instead of relying on your employers or the government it's about cre creating businesses creating something that would make you money with minimum input in the long run at the beginning you may work take a lot long hours but as you grow or as your business grow, you're then able to actually get the business to work without you. So what are the things to consider when starting up a business? The first thing you want to consider is choosing something you love. This is where lots of people make mistakes. mistake. When I said choosing something you love, I'm not just saying choosing something you love because you love it, okay? I'm talking about something that you love, that you know you can do without expecting any payment from it without expecting any payment from it. you can do it day in and day out without wanting a salary because you love that thing for me it's property i love property i can go out there analyze deals view properties every single day if i want to because i love it i love walking into a dilapidated house where my superpower goes at work thinking oh what can i do in this property right add a bedroom there add a sitting room there maybe go to the office. it gives me that goosebump it gives me that pleasure of doing that for you what is that thing you will do you love it so much you cannot substitute it with anybody else is it maybe um having an online business for example is it whatever that is make sure you love what you're going to be doing because believe in me or not it's not what the people are telling you in social media they don't tell you about the hard work they do behind closed doors to get them to where they want to go so basically it's important for you to be able to work harder behind closed doors when nobody's watching and the only way that happens truly and honestly is doing things that you love because if you don't you won't continue doing it and you will give up and then you end up being one of the things that you started that you've never completed so you don't want to be one of those people especially if you're watching my content okay you want to be an action taker you want to be someone who is relentless that can go all out to get their own thing done so find something that you love it could be anything it could be anything that you love right find a write a list have 10 15 20 ideas of things that you love that you will substitute for anybody else okay that's one thing so once you've looked at those items i don't want you to have one list or one item have multiple of items okay we'll have multiple of items because at this stage you are brainstorming about what you'd like to do okay you want to be you are brainstorming at this point and the second thing you want to be doing at that point after you've done that is identify if there is a market for what you want to do sometimes you love things but there's no market for it okay so once you know this idea once you want to look at that look at the market is there a market for my business idea is there a market for the love i have for this product would people buy it would people commit to the service would would, would people want to be doing this 
And most importantly, the thing you like is a, a reoccurring thing or it's a one-off purchase, right? So you need to identify that as well because that then gives you, that then gets you to, to start to strategize. You maybe want to think, think about ideas that can bring you steady reoccurring income that people can buy on a regular basis. For example, it could be a grocery business, for example. People can buy food all the time. It could be maybe batteries. People need to charge their phones or maybe charge their gadget. Or maybe you look for something that people use all the time, whatever that may be for you. So look for something that can bring you steady recurring income with the minimal output, okay? That's what you wanna be thinking about. If you wanna be selling shirt, jeans, trainers, go for it. But just know that it's a different market. When someone buy one shirt, they may not buy another shirt for maybe a couple of months or so, maybe some, for some instances, six or seven months or maybe a year. But that may compensate with the margin that you'll be making in that, in that product. It could be 50% margin, 60% margin, whatever that margin is for you, basically. That will then determine what you want to do in that business. So think about it. Is there a market for it? So once you know there's a market for it, you want to know what sort of market is it? Because you know you need to know the your market disposable income, right? Are you looking for moms with two or three children? Are they going to be able to afford what you're going to be selling? What are their average disposable income? So very important for you to know things like that as well, because that will then help you understand where your product fit is. Okay, you want to be knowing that. So once you know that, then you look at the income. Would they be able to buy it? And then once you know that, how often do you think they'll be able to buy items like this? You may be thinking, whoa, this is overwhelming, I cannot do all these things. You can, literally, technology made it so easy. You can even write a post on your social media platform saying, I'm looking to do X, Y, Z. Um, do you think A is a good idea, B is not a good idea, or whatever you want to do, do, do like a poll, for example, a, a poll where people can select the ideas you may have. So based on that, then you know your market, right? Once you know your market, the next thing is to do, I know most people talk about this, which is the third thing, is to create a business plan. I am an accountant by um, background, right? I should be literally preaching a business plan. For, for me, I don't call it business plan. I call it a story. Create a story behind why you're doing what you're doing. Is it because you had difficulties resolving that, that issue? Is it because your family went through hard times? Is it because you've had a family member who had a problem on that? Whatever that may bring that story, the closer the story to you, the more relatable people will feel and the more connected people would feel with you. So whatever that story is, okay? It's not just about the figures, it's about the story that is relatable to people that you communicate with, okay? Because once you've got that story, you back that up with your business ideas and your business figures, people remember the story. They don't remember the figures. Most businesses are invested based on their story, not on their business plan. So you need to have a have an attention grabbing, emotional story to grab attention, to get people to want to work with you. Here's the thing, if you've got that story and that story is a very good story and it is a story that people can relate to, it is emotional, it's something that you fight and you've won and you overcome, you were able to go get through that, people don't remember the figures. They remember the story and that story is what sticks in their mind and that's what would be the reason they invest in you. Think about it, Airbnb had over 100 business plan declined. Literally, they got wherever they went, nobody invested in them. But when they changed that to a story, they had people pouring money at them, okay? When he changed that to become a story, it's amazing. And now he's building his brand around that story. So think about it. What difficulties have you faced? Or what difficulties has your family member face, your child, your son, your daughter, or your cousin, whatever that may be for you, that has given you that light bulb moment to create what you've just created, that's what's gonna sell. Number four, raising finance. Funding your business. Now you've got that story, now it's about funding your business. So the first thing I would advise you to tap into, tap into your personal savings. If you have savings, or if you have assets, if you have some source of sort of funds to get your business going, start with that. Because investors wants to know you have a skin on the game. They just don't want to invest in your knowledge or your experience. They want to know 
John has had some input in this deal. John has had input in this business. He's invested X, Y, Z amount to get the business going. If anything, bootstrap your business. Because once you bootstrap your business and you are one, saving on interest, two, you're saving on people taking share of your business and bootstrapping the business allows you to have a history, create a concept and start making money. Because once you start making money, people then will know it's a sustainable, viable business that then attract people to you. The second way of funding your business would be a bank loan, for example. Traditional finance options, for example, you go to various banks, ask for loans, tell them what you intend to do. Again, that's where you wanna start talking about your story, right? Talk about your story, why you started the business, what can you emotionally use to connect the, the, the bank manager to lend you that money, okay? You can approach angel investors as well. You should be able to explain the concept of your business in 30 seconds. If it's more than 30 seconds, you haven't got a business. You haven't got a story, okay? You want to be describing what your business does, not a title. A title will not get you anywhere. What gets you somewhere is describing, painting a picture about what you do. For example, you can say you have a business that allow homeowners to swap houses. And from the money you make from there, you use that money to build houses for the homeless. Boom. That could be another one. That's one of the businesses I am persuading right now. Um, we are literally um, doing a home, we, we are creating a platform that would allow people to swap homes. And from the homes they swap, the proceed we make from there, we use that proceed to help build homes for the homeless in underdeveloped countries. So again, that is emotionally connected to me because obviously when I, was, when I was a foster child, I couldn't go on holiday because it was too expensive and my family could not afford to go on holiday. Hence, I started that sort of business. See, connecting me, right? It's connecting me at that point. These, so these are the things you wanna be thinking about when you're approaching investors like crowdfunding platforms as well. So when you use this story, it gets people to connect with you. And then obviously they will then look at your story and then look at your business plan and then invest with you. Number five, the final and most important thing is persistence. Persistence is the key to any success. Don't give up, go in, go in, thrive. Work hard behind closed doors when no one is watching. Remember, your early days is gonna be really, really hard and tough, okay? Remember that you'll be having sleepless nights, you're gonna be um, staying home doing your own thing, not socializing with people, um, trying to grow your business, going to business networking event left, right and center. Don't give up, be persevere. Don't allow any noise, any distraction around you because you might hear you might have another business idea and you might have another thing going. So don't allow all, any of these noises or negative sales to say, oh, this is not gonna work. This is gonna be a waste of time. You, 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 you should be doing something else. Don't allow that to stop you. Be persevere, be consistent, be, be, be relentless in your dream. You see, the people that are criticizing you right now are the people that are gonna say, oh, yo, I know John was gonna do this. I know John was gonna be successful. BS, they were not saying that. Behind your back, they were talking lots of BSs behind you. But here you are now, you're a very successful entrepreneur and you're doing really, really well for yourself. So these are the things to consider when starting a, a, a business. I'll go through them again. One, do something that, that you love. Second, identify if there's a market for it. Number three, create a story to back up your business plan. Number four, raise finance. Start with your own money first. And number five, stay persistent and commitment and committed to what you set yourself to do. I really hope this video has been helpful. If this video has been helpful, smash the like button below, subscribe to my channel for more amazing videos. I look forward to sharing the next video. Thank you.